They, they were ready to give up, I mean. But yeah. They, they had a little basement in, in the house, so we put them down in the basement. And they were there for about a week while the war was being ended. Right. So that's unbelievable. You went in, chased these people out, and, and you slept there for in a bed for the first time in, what? Months. Months. Yeah. And you wake up, and there's Germans armed sleeping German, in another room in the same house. Four German soldiers, yeah. Wow. Uh, one of them I know, he said he would, had, well, had been a history teacher at a high school in Germany, and when he yeah. got drafted, he was in his 40s, in his mid-40s. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the people who were there at that, near the end of the war, were people that, they were young people or older people, a lot of them had been drafted. But, sure. Uh, but then, uh, from there on, we, uh, we knew that the war in Japan was still going on, so right. they transferred me to another, uh, an infantry division. Oh, along with, with totally most different. of our division, uh, the 45th Infantry Division, and uh, we were sent uh, to uh, La Havre, France, to get on a ship to go back to the United States, which was they were planning to send us over to the Japan yeah. for that invasion. And when we were halfway across the uh, Atlantic on the way back, they Japanese. dropped the bombs. Mm -hmm. So by the time we landed in New York. Why uh, they didn't have any idea what to do with us. Yeah. So they sent us home for three months. Oh, well, that had to be they nice. They would free ride home and yeah, sent to report papers. back. So I reported back to a, uh, when I reported back uh, near the end of that particular year, I, uh, to uh, a camp in, uh, in Wisconsin. But it was, we were re uh, letting people go out of the, so we were helping people get discharged. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, unbelievable. So when you got home and everything was finished and you you were done uh, with your service there, had had anything changed like in terms of your perspective back home, or was anything very different, or was it just kind of back to the same thing as before you left? Does that make any sense? Had the country changed much in your eyes in that time that you were gone? Uh, I don't think so, not to my knowledge. Uh, <laughs> I. I you know, I never even thought of it that particular time. Right, you were just. I, uh, you, you come back and you're so tickled, you get your, what did they pay you? Uh, $50 and $40 or $50 a month for, for six months. And uh, by the, I, I made arrangements, had gone down to the University of Wisconsin and taken all my exams to, to get into the university. And uh, so I knew what was going to happen to me in the fall. And I went to work in a canning factory for the summer. Okay. And. Uh, Wow. I, I don't recall there being any great change. Uh, people had been through an awful lot. Of course, they made no automobiles mm -hmm. that whole period of time from the start. Yeah, all metal and all effort was Everything went making against. guns, so tanks. Was making tanks and mm -hmm. airplanes and stuff. So uh, that, that, it, it, was a, it was kind of a boom time as far as work was concerned. Sure, yeah. All those factories had a job, right? The government was. Yeah, the was government. Yeah, everybody was working. I, I remember, it just, it just I remember I had a, a, a cousin who was married to a guy who had had trouble finding work, and then uh, when uh, the war was getting started, early in the war, uh, he went up to Superior, Wisconsin, and got a job. You know, in the what, shipyard. what would you like uh -huh. them to to get out of you sharing your experiences? You know what. You know, what, what would you like them to take away from, from, from what you've had to say? Well, I, I, I think that probably one of the greatest things was the total unity of our country. Mm -hmm. But for far our, what, our all, whole country was unified and everybody was cooperating for the war effort. That was because it was a total war. Right. Mm -hmm. The wars we have today are something totally different. And... Uh, uh, I, I, I think uh, show an appreciation because you know most most of the veterans from at least from the first uh, the uh, World War both one and two and the Korean War mm -hmm. never asked for anything mm -hmm. we were given a lot we were very they they would help us if we wanted to get jobs or they would pay for your training and so forth if you weren't going to school. Uh, and we were very appreciative of that. Uh, the, the country was so unified at that particular time that uh, everybody was just 
but I guess to have the war over and be back. Uh, I, if anything you can get out of it, if it's a total war where then we have to defend our country to keep freedom, that's mm -hmm. one thing. To start wars or go into wars where other countries are fighting each other to help one side out, it's very difficult for me to see where we should get too involved in that. Sure. Okay. Um, let's see. That was it. My next question was going to be, you know, did you want to compare the 1950s to 2008? But I think that you've, well, you've already I, I done that. I could say something, but I would be, uh, <laughs> I, I, every time I do, I get into trouble with somebody. Well, I think you've earned the right to have an opinion. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, the only other thing I want to say is thank you so much. You know, um, like, like I said earlier, you know, we can say everything, but it's your actions that were the most important, both on the war front and at home. All the sacrifices that were made, you know, the, the bond drives and the metal drives, and the, even they did food rationing and everything, just unbelievable. So, you know, thank you very much. Well, I thank you very much for asking us. Absolutely. May it be an evening star shines down upon you. May it be.